Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this one we're going to be addressing one of the most frequently asked questions in my previous two videos and that's how do we incorporate OpenAI stream functionality into our GPT powered iOS app. So this feature lets you stream the data from OpenAI's API incrementally so you don't have to wait long wait times for an entire blob of data to come back. This will help you 10x the response wait times and enhance your user experience. Now I know you're ready so let's get into it. So the way we're going to work through this is we're going to use the code for the app that we built in the previous video so if you haven't seen that head over to the video I think it's up on this side, where previously we built a SwiftUI version of ChatGPT where you can send through messages and get back the responses. The only problem with that was you'd have to wait for the entire response to come back and so you're waiting a really long time and we don't want that. So we're going to use the stream functionality here as you pretty much expect, that's why you're on this video, but we're going to go and change the code to refactor that and make it work with stream instead of just sending a message and waiting. We're gonna jump into our OpenAI service and we're going to create a version of the send message function that uses the stream functionality instead. So we're going to say function send stream message and this is going to take in an array of messages. Now our UI uses a different message struct than the one that we used to send through to the OpenAI API. I do explain that in the previous video but basically there's a lot more information that we want for our UI than the OpenAI API will accept. So to avoid those errors, I just map the messages from our UI over to an OpenAI chat message so I can send that through to the API. So we'll grab that variable. We also want our body which takes in the model GPT-4 and our array of messages and the headers which contains the bearer token and OpenAI API key. So we're gonna grab that and paste that in here. And where this differs now is instead of returning back an open AI chat response, we're actually going to return back a data stream. So here we want to say return data stream request. And the great thing is it comes built in with Alamafire. Alamafire has stream functionality built in, so we're gonna go ahead and use that. So af.stream request, I want the method, parameters, encoder, headers, and that's about it. So for the URL convertible, we're going to pass in the endpoint URL and it's a post request. Our parameters are going to be the body variable. Our encoder is JSON and pass in the headers. There is one thing missing here and that's the fact that we need to pass in the stream parameter to the endpoint for it to know that we want to stream back our responses and not just send us one big blob of data. So we're going to go ahead and change the open AI chat body to include the stream parameter and this is a Boolean. And so obviously in here, we're going to say stream and we want that to be true. And now we've pretty much set up our function that sends through to the API. Obviously I'm getting an error up here. So I'm going to say stream for this one is false. And we've pretty much set up our stream function in the open AI service. Next, we'll jump over to the chat view model where we'll be able to send this request and pass back the responses. It gets a little bit ugly based on the way open AI has formatted their responses, but I got you in this one. So jump over to your chat view model and I'm going to comment out this async code here. And we're going to start off by saying open AI service dot send stream message and pass in our array of messages. And then ideally you wanna access response stream decodable, but unfortunately the way the responses are formatted, it's pretty difficult to decode what open AI sends back. So instead we're going to use a response stream string and then pass those responses into a format that works well with our UI. So we go response stream string and we're going to capture the stream and then our stream will be split up into two events, either a stream event or a completion event. And the completion event tells us that the stream has finished processing and basically do whatever you want with the UI now. No more data is gonna come through. So we'll do a switch on our stream dot event and the cases are going to be either stream and we'll capture the response here, print response. And then the alternative case is the complete and we'll just ignore this. And this is where we know it's all complete. So I'm going to build and run and see what we get back from the endpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and send through a message saying help with some code and hit send. And just watch all these data responses come back. So we're getting a whole bunch of data over here and still going, awesome. So given that it's a success, we know that it's a result type. So we're gonna jump into here and say switch response case success and we're gonna capture the string and in the case of a failure, well, generally we shouldn't get the failure. So, and we're gonna just print something failed, but hopefully we don't get that. Now let's print this string and we should basically start seeing all of the data coming back. Help with code. And there we go, we're getting all of our responses back. So this is the object that you wanna process. Now the reason it gets ugly is because it 
it's pretty much a string and it's not in a valid JSON format. So you can't decode the JSON immediately. So we need to process this data. Here's where it gets even juicier. Sometimes they send two of these bits of data in the one string and so we need to split that up. I've already gone through and figured out an efficient way of doing this. So let's jump into the code. The first thing we wanna do is create a response struct that captures all of this information here. So we're going to say struct chat stream completion response, make sure it conforms to decodable. And it's going to have an ID of string and we want our choices. I'm going to ignore the other variables because we don't really need those at the moment. And this is going to be a chat stream uh, choice. So then we're going to create that as well. Struct chat stream choice and make sure that conforms to decodable as well. Now our choice object contains a delta that delta equals and this object type is going to be a chat stream content item. So again, let's create that. Also decodable. And this is just going to contain a string. So we've pretty much set up what we need for this. And now we're going to go ahead and create a function called pass stream data. And we're going to take in a string and we're going to return back an array of completion responses. Now, the reason we're returning back an array, ideally you would only just return the object by itself. But like I said, unfortunately we get back sometimes more than one response in the single response. So we're going to return back an array and we're going to iterate through that array and make the adjustments or the updates as we go. If we actually have a look at the first response we got back, it was something that looked a little like this. So here we've actually got two pieces of data in the one string. So we want to basically separate on the data string. So let's work through this on how we can pass this data right here. So the first thing we want to do, we're going to say let response string equals data. We have our response string and we're going to say data dot and we're going to split this on the data object. So the data string is the word data with a semicolon and we're going to split that. And now what this should do is give us an array of these objects. It'll also give us an empty one at the beginning. And so what we wanna do is we wanna map these objects and we're going to trim the characters in white spaces and new lines. So we wanna get rid of the leading and trailing white spaces and new lines. And then after this, we're going to filter to make sure that we don't have any empty responses. So make sure we filter by is not empty. And this will give us an array of these objects. Then what we wanna do is create a JSON decoder Let's just make this plural as well. So it's response strings. And then we're going to return response strings dot compact map. Reason I'm using a compact map is because if anything fails in the decoding process, we just ignore that string altogether. So we're going to compact map, grab our JSON string. Then to grab the data, we're going to guard let JSON data equals JSON string dot data using dot UTF eight. Then we want to grab our stream response and that's equal to decoder, JSON decoder dot decode. And we're going to decode our JSON data. Oh, we're going to decode an object of type chat stream completion response dot self from the data, which is our JSON data. And then else we're going to return nil. But if that all succeeded, then we're going to return our JSON what are we returning? Our stream response, that's the one, stream response. So now here we can jump back up to here and say, let stream response equals pass stream data and pass in our string. And then we're going to print our stream response and see what we get back. Print stream response. And let's, do we have anything? What's our issues here? Oh, it's saying this is not a conditional and that's because we forgot to add our try. So make sure it's a try optional so that we can get back a nil if it fails and well, yeah, we'll get from there. Seems like everything's, uh, what do we have here? Ah, okay. So I'm going to just capture weak self and then I will guard let self equals self else return. So I just make sure I capture that. So we have no memory leaks and now we have self dot pass stream data seems about right build and run now we're going to say 
help with some code again. And we should be getting back. There we go, beautiful. We're actually receiving back our stream responses with the content that we're after, amazing. Now, the last thing that we wanna do is iterate through this and say stream response dot for each. So now that we're receiving our new message response, we wanna convert the data from that into a message and then update our messages array. So. The way we're gonna do that is if it's the first piece of data that we get back from the stream, then we're going to create a new message. If we already have a message from this data stream, then we're going to keep editing the message with that ID until we reach the completion of the stream. So the first thing we're going to do is grab the content from our response. So we say guard let message content is equal to new message response dot choices dot first dot delta dot content. And if this is nil, then we're just going to return because we don't want to do anything with our messages. So then we're going to check if we already have a message with this ID. So we're going to say guard let existing message is equal to, so guard let existing message is equal to messages. So last index where the ID of this element is equal to our new message response dot ID. One thing you want to know is we actually want the index, not the message itself. So that way we can modify the message. If that message doesn't exist, we're going to create a new message. The new message is equal to message. And the ID will be our new message response dot ID. The role is assistant content is our message content and created at current date. So for this new message, we're going to say messages or self dot dot messages dot append new message and make sure we add self here and then return from our guard statement and now if the message does exist what we're going to do is create a new message is equal to message pass in the id again new message response dot id the role is going to be assistant as well the message for this will be messages existing message index dot content so we're getting the existing content plus the message so message content from our new stream of data or our new data from the stream and then self dot messages existing message index is equal to new message so that seems to do what we need let's just make sure that we need self here so let's build and run and see if we get any errors build succeeded now let's have a look, help with some code. And we hit send. Sure, let's start with a basic Swift code example. It's pretty fast and this is using GPT-4. This pretty much covers everything. It's now working on stream. Uh, let's say, can you help with JS? And now we're getting res message responses a lot faster and we can actually see it typing as we're going along. Now one small thing I did notice is whenever I do send a message, if I wait for it to send something back and then I send another message like this, how are you? It'll actually replace the message up here and they'll both be the same. I noticed that was when we changed the UUID over to the IDs that we were bringing back from uh, the API. I ended up making this an empty string. So instead I'm just going to change this to a UUID and then grab the string from that. Now if we build and run, we shouldn't get that issue because now all of the IDs are unique. So if I just say something like this, hi, and then wait for the response, it shouldn't do that when I send the next message. There we go. So now the messages are both separate. And now you got yourself a ChatGPT app that doesn't take forever to wait for the message. So you can see how easy it was to incorporate that functionality and speed up the response time on your iOS app. Now I'm gonna be putting out a whole bunch more AI powered videos, but if you have anything specific that you want me to make a video about, don't forget to leave a comment down below. And if you want more frequent updates, make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell. Also, a lot of you have asked for the source code. Now we'll be making the source code to some of my videos available, but that'll be through my website's newsletter. And you can find the link to that in the description below. But until the next video, I'll catch you then. Peace.